What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear 5R work plans, drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Hello, leader. I see a lot of you hiring right now, and that's a good thing because each new person that joins your team, it brings new energy and more capacity to your small business. Um, well, unless it doesn't. Am I right? You see, I know that it doesn't always work out so well. You can be so excited about someone during the interview and the job offer stage, and then wham, you're feeling derailed because your newest team member is not keeping up, not fitting in, and not being as fantastic as you hoped they'd be. Today, let's talk about going from the resume to the reality and figure out how to navigate the first month with your new hire. I'm going to share some examples of how to talk with your new team member throughout their 30 days. And I'm also going to give you some examples of how you can stretch your team members so that they can have a chance to build upon what they've learned throughout the early days with you. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. I'm your host, Shelley Warren. I've worked with so many business owners over the years, and they all have the same secret to spill when we first meet. They have team troubles. Yes, it's a secret they've been keeping for a long while because most of their peers and family don't believe them. You see, from the outside, everything looks fabulous. They've built a wonderful reputation, a strong following of delighted clients and customers. They've created a brand that resonates with people, and the proof is in their revenues. But the truth is, they're struggling to lead people, and they've pretty much been around the block and back with team turnover. They admit that they're proud of the small business they've built, and yet at the same time, they're so tired of trying to grow without an agile team who are happy to work alongside them. They know that they need a team but not just any team. And just like you, they're ready to learn how to lead in such a way that fits their perspective as a woman who owns a business, runs a second shift on the home front, and wants to create a legacy for their family and community for years to come. So let's hold hands and jump in together with today's episode. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. We are deep into fall up here in Canada. I'm sure you are too. So you've got all the things, sweaters, quilts, cool booties. I've got quite a collection that I'm always adding to so I can take full advantage of them before the actual snow boots come out. For anyone who lives where there's an actual hard winter ahead, you get it. We've got to enjoy these last few weeks of fall weather before we have to really start bundling up. Ugh, not looking forward to that. But there are a few great things that are happening right now. We're hosting our first virtual live workshop tomorrow. Yeah, November 8th is the Team Tone Up workshop. And there's still time for you to get registered with the link that's in the episode description. Or just head over to stackingyourteam.com slash Team Tone Up. I'm going to host virtual workshops often where I'll be teaching you something live to help you accelerate your capability to lead your team without it draining all of your time and energy. These are going to be two hour workshops where you'll learn something and then take action on it right there and I'll be there to help you. So be the first to hear about the next one by joining my newsletter. Sign up with the link in the episode description or visit the website. I'd love to support you and actually meet you. And heads up, 
For those of you who live near me, I'm heading back to my mansion to host a one-day mastermind, and I can't wait. November 22nd. Mm -hmm. That's just a few short weeks away. That's the day, and it's going to be a memorable one. You know, I used to host so many events at that lovely property, and it's going to feel like coming home again, being there and welcoming women who lead to come on in. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, that sounds amazing, but that day's booked already. Like, I've got some clients that day, or I've got a personal appointment that day. Okay, I hear you. But how many times are you going to wish you could attend a full day of in-person coaching with me and other incredible women who are also building fabulous businesses, but you keep putting other people first so you don't attend, and then you're resentful about it all day because you'd rather be with me at the mansion. Clear your calendar and get in the car and join me. You won't regret it. You can get all the details in the episode description or pop over to stackingyourteam.com slash masterminds. All right, let's get into today's episode by starting with this familiar fact that I have for you to noodle on. The team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there. Has it happened to you? You hired someone and it didn't turn out like you'd hoped. You may have had to terminate them, or they suddenly quit or even ghosted you. Upon reflection, you realize that there were red flags, but those were downplayed, or maybe your onboarding plan fell apart. You may have learned that this person simply wasn't committed to learning the skills required in their role, so they never really truly met your expectations. Or how about this one? Your newest team member gets on the nerves of your other team members. Oh my gosh, it's all so frustrating. The real life struggles with leading people in your small business. So what can we do? Well, first, let me preface by saying that this particular episode would be a great one to share with whomever is your lead trainer on your team or whomever would be a team leader on your team. So people who are responsible for the onboarding of new people. Inside the leadership lab in the team leader program, those clients get lots of support on this. We take it further, truly reinforcing the importance of their role and the influence on the success of anyone who joins their team. So let's break this down. Let's talk about the journey of going from resume to reality by starting with the week of the interview. So you've met someone and you think they'd be great to join your team. Your number one priority when you think you've found your next best hire is to check references. I am so shocked at how often this step is missed and you know it's always regretful. Often I hear that people don't check references because it feels too old school or they don't know what to ask. Let me tell you, there's nothing old school about checking references, especially in the world of AI generated resumes and people who frequently shift from job to job. And you don't own a zillion dollar corporation. You are a small business owner and Every single person on your team matters. So check those references. Now here's one key question for you to ask the former employer. Here it is. Would you consider hiring them back again? If they say yes, then follow that with, would you hire them back into the same role or something different? This is so insightful because you want to hear from them that your potential new team member would be welcome to return. That says a lot about how they exited. Hearing if the employer would hire them back into the same role says a lot too. It says that they met the expectations in that role. If they say they'd hire them back, but into a different role, ask what role? You're listening to hear how they have a different perspective now on where they think they'd be better suited, a better fit. Now, can you see how having this information would be so helpful? 
especially before you go and make that job offer. Yes, there would be more reference check questions to ask, but those two cut right to the chase. Okay, so now let's move to week one of going from resume to reality. Let the onboarding begin. And as we go through today's episode, I'm going to share some examples of how to talk with your new team member throughout their first 30 days. And I'm also going to give you some examples of how you can stretch your team members so that they have a chance to build upon what they've learned throughout the early days with you, especially as we get past the first few weeks. Okay, here we are, it's week one. Now this is where you'd roll out the welcome wagon and do everything you can do to help them feel like they just made the best decision ever to accept your job offer and join your team. If you've been a fan of the podcast, you know that I refer to this as the first moment of truth. It's where the person gets an immediate impression of whether what you said they could expect on the role posting and in the interview is legit or did you embellish? Some of you are incredible at the welcome wagon stuff. I've heard from some of our clients who are enrolled in the team leader program with us how well some of you go the extra mile to ensure the newest team member feels fabulous on day one, including those of you who have a remote team. I love the creativity and how you're getting their peers rallied around the activities of week one. So what about the actual nuts and bolts of week one? If you want to truly leverage the first 30 days or sooner with your newest team member, you've got to be intentional. It starts with a plan and focuses on noticing nuances such as red flags, examples of their ability to lean into your core values, and of course, their outlook on the work. It could look like this. Day one, two, and three, here's where you're gonna focus on the welcome, the meet up with you, the CEO, and the basics of paperwork required to be a fully fledged team member, like banking forms, security badge, or door entry codes, a paid lunch, and all the equipment and stationery, and then of course, the fun stuff, like swag. And the key gift to share with them on day one, here it is, the onboarding plan itself, with a trainer, or a leader to take them through the plan by breaking it all down and talking about what they can expect. Now, day two and three should include a walkthrough of your space, including virtual walkthroughs of your online space, like Slack channels and Dropboxes and such. You'd also set them up with equipment, access to software and electronic files, an email account, Oh my gosh, you know, all the things that they need to get going and start doing something. By day three, they should have met a few peers and been introduced to any clients who may have been on site. The key to day three, four, and five is that they know who their leader is, who their trainer is, and they know what their 30-day work plan is. Now, some of you might think that every new hire needs a five-hour work plan. No, start with a 30-day work plan that covers the priority tasks that they need to master so that their learning curve is not unreasonably difficult. And you know, nothing is more exciting than starting a new role with a new company and a new team when you know exactly what you're going to be doing for the first while. The 30-day work plan coupled with the actual onboarding plan is the gift that just keeps on giving at this point of building your working relationship with your newest team member. It continues to be exciting when the onboarding plan is an actual plan, not an on the fly or here's what we're going to be doing today story. Now, I get it. Sometimes the plan is derailed due to a client emergency or someone calls in sick and you have to backfill for them. But planning for the unplanned adds to that first moment of truth by demonstrating to your new team member that they're not an afterthought that's being squeezed into the daily operations, but someone you're keen to include. 
One way to ensure you don't lose momentum is to have plenty of self-led learning tools and activities lined up that link to the priority tasks for their 30-day work plan. There are so many great low-cost but very effective software tools that you can use, including having other team members create digital trainings that can be a welcome change of pace for the new team member and act as a great way to fill in or offer a replacement training topic if the trainer is being pulled into the operations unexpectedly. I like to see self-led learning topics that showcase your core values, key policies, compliance, safety, quality, and that educate the new team member on your local philanthropic efforts or partnerships with vendors, suppliers, and of course, client pipelines. When they know where to find these trainings, how to go through the pieces of training, and then sign off that they've done the trainings, they are then self-sufficient and could revisit those trainings even weeks later if they need to because there's something pertinent that triggers them to wanna go and check back on that again. Okay, so now let's move to week two of going from resume to reality in those first 30 days. So everything's humming along well, and the watch out here is that often trainers will overshoot the plan and start talking about and training the new person on tasks way too early. You know, tasks that are not on the 30-day work plan at all. Stick to showing, telling, training, demonstrating, and then gauging their ability to execute priority tasks, not just once, but often. You don't want to see them do a task well and then call it done. Remember, they are learning a lot at once. Let's give them repetitive tasks that they can master early on for those early wins and early momentum. Other key points to look for during week two is that they can leverage what they've learned in week one to set them up for success. Are they building new habits? Are they using checklists and templates and paying attention to calendars and schedules? They should also be getting more comfortable with shadowing peers, observing, asking great questions, taking notes, and collecting their thoughts each day to review with their trainer, either at the end of the day or to kick off the next day with. Now, if you find yourself having to repeat instructions or remind them to reference their training materials and their SOPs, or if you see or hear them asking the same questions over and over again, you know those are red flags. So what should you do? Well, slow down the pace of the training, but take note of where the stumbling blocks are. Is the gap an actual training problem, a language problem, or an attitude problem? Are you asking for feedback? Are you giving them time to finish a task before you pull them into the next one? Are you asking them what seems more difficult than they expected? And here's a doozy. Are you minimizing the number of meetings you're exposing them to? Now, you might think that they should come along with you, join you on every call and every meeting to get exposure to the work. I caution you on that during week one and two. Here's why. Too many distractions. Yeah, meetings are distractions when you're trying to learn core skills and core tasks in a new role. Oh my gosh. The people, the conversations, the atmosphere, the dynamics can all put them off of their focus and clutter up their heads with information that is simply too much too soon for them to start thinking about. Best to sprinkle in meetings during this time, not bombard them. Okay, now let's move to week three of going from resume to reality during your new hire's first 30 days. This is the time where you should be able to answer confidently whether or not their learning curve is shortening or lengthening. This is a great time to highlight how far they've come and where they need to go back and master a skill or concept, building that memory muscle. They'll not ditch their training resources yet. Mm -mm. They can quickly refer to them, checking things off, creating that confidence that they've been able to meet those expectations consistently. 
And here's your chance to have those deeper conversations with your new hire. And you can start off those conversations with something that could sound like this. At this point of your onboarding, I would have expected you to comfortably be able to do X. I'm seeing that you're having difficulty doing the initial part of the task, but then you're able to finish it off well. Can you tell me about what's tripping you up about starting this task? Now, you'd also want to see that they're demonstrating their ability to abide by your team culture, core values, and that they're interacting respectively with you and their peers at this stage. So how would you know? Well, their actions with you and their peers should sound a bit like this if your newest team member is your assistant. Here we go. I know that you prefer to have a closed time block each day after lunch, so I've deferred Sharon's request to meet with you to right before the end of the day. You'll be able to leave at your normal time, and she was happy to get a chance to speak with you today. Boom! This is evidence that they're learning your preferences, how to save you time, and how to be of service to you and the other team members, and how to engage with you. Here's an example of how to have a conversation with your new team member that will rapidly confirm if they're ready to be stretched or not. Either way, it's time to give them a new task that links to what they've already learned. Now, for a new hire whose role is to be a designer's assistant, that conversation could go like this. Jane, for the start of your third week of onboarding with us, we want to give you a chance to put what you've learned so far into practice by supporting Shauna this week. It will help you develop your critical thinking skills. What I mean by that is often she'll be working closely with the client, so setting her up for success would be so appreciated. Here's what that could look like. Knowing a few days ahead of what her schedule is and then gathering what she needs for those meetings or that site visit. This would save her a ton of time and going over her preference sheet is going to save you time and ensure that she has what she needs. By the end of the week, you're going to know her preferences really well and you'll definitely know what her key projects are. She'll see you as someone who's intent on helping her always be prepared for those important client meetings. Now, in this situation, you've just set up an opportunity for your new team member to show you that they can listen and hear the intended outcome and use common sense to take action to make things happen. You'd want to see them thoughtfully consider how best to move forward and actually find Shauna's preference sheet. Go and look at her project schedule and then look to see exactly what visits and meetings she has planned for the week. Can they connect the dots? Can they take what they've learned in their first two weeks to help support another team member? How thorough will they be? Will they rush through it and forget something? Will they get stuck, overwhelmed? Will they ask for help? When they meet or exceed your expectations, you'll reinforce it with them by acknowledging it with examples, backing up your feedback. Where they don't meet your expectations, you'll do the same offering examples, and offering ideas on how they can improve. And I want to encourage you to keep track of what areas of this stretch task that they're doing really well and what seem to be more difficult. Okay, so now let's move to week four of going from resume to reality in those first 30 days with your new hire. It's time to check in on how you're feeling and how your new team member is feeling. And the more honest, the better. It's so worth it to have an open conversation with them about these things. The first question to ask them is this. Do they feel like they're making progress? They'll talk, you'll listen, and then you'll share where you think they're making progress. This conversation is designed to allow them a chance to share their wins, show their curiosity about their work, or the workplace itself, and for both of you to acknowledge any challenges they've overcome along the way, including moments where the onboarding plan may have been a little lackluster. The second question to ask them is this, where are they feeling uncomfortable? They'll talk, you'll listen, and then you'll share where you are seeing them struggle and where you've been disappointed in an outcome or an expectation that wasn't met, and then back that up with actual examples. 
This conversation is designed to allow them to ask for more clarity, ask for more practice, or a redo of a specific training, or maybe some help reworking a training resource that's out of date or that they thought was mediocre. You'll also want to check in on if they're uncomfortable interacting with any team members or clients. Now, if you and the trainer or your leadership team members are all aligned that this person has made enough progress to warrant moving forward, then here's a third question to ask them. Are you feeling ready to move on with your 60-day work plan? They'll talk and you'll listen. And then you'll be prepared to outline what they can expect in their next 30 days. This is where you've got to get specific. And it could sound something like this. Over the next 30 days, I'll be expecting you to shift over into more complex tasks that link to Shauna's rule. One of the key reasons you were hired was to relieve Shauna of some tasks and at the same time, compound the efforts of that business function. You'll be exposed to more of the operations, workflows, and get a better understanding of what our clients are looking for. I'll be counting on you to keep your eyes open, stay focused on the project schedule and those workflows, and look for every chance you get to double down on minor tasks. What I mean by that is completing them promptly so that they don't pile up and possibly cause a bottleneck for you or Shauna. Tell me about what you're looking forward to in the next 30 days with us. So you've hit 30 days with your newest team member, which typically will give you four full weeks of working with them and they working alongside you and their peers. It's enough time to gauge their core capabilities, their attitude, their energy, and their ability to learn something new. Master it and then do it again consistently. You're looking for signs that they can take on more learning, including some self-led learning opportunities where they don't require as much oversight and you can start to trust one another. One last thing, here's a quick, simple, but powerful way to gauge a new team member's willingness to learn. Here it is. (laughs) Do they have a notebook where they're capturing thoughts, questions, steps, and tips? Now, you might think that a notebook is old school because everyone uses a device of some sort now. Mm Mm-hmm, I get it. But you can set an expectation where you give them a brand new notebook on day one and tell them that this is the preferred personal tool that all of your new hires will use during their onboarding so that they don't fall into the trap of capturing key information in many different ways and inside many different platforms. The notebook is the one tool that they will never be without during the onboarding. Mm -hmm. and reinforce that. And of course, bonus points to any new person who arrives on day one carrying their own notebook. So as we close out today's episode, here's two steps to take action on what you've just learned today. Number one, share this episode with your team leaders. You know, those people on your team who are responsible for onboarding others. Number two, Zip back a few weeks to episode 288, 288. I titled that one, The Critical First 90 Days in Their Role. For even more insight on how to ensure you can leverage your time and your new hire's time as they join your business. That episode also dives into those first 90 days for a team member who you just promoted into a new role. Another moment in the evolution of your small business that matters deeply to you and your team. You know, too often, the root cause of problems during the onboarding phase of someone's new role is that we don't plan in moments to check in, give more direction, ask for feedback, or stretch someone so that you can see evidence that they've been able to comprehend key concepts and tasks and then logically know how to build on it. If your new team member requires overcoaching and lots of handholding, you know that that's a red flag. You then have to reflect on whether the gap is lack of training, is pace the issue, meaning the trainings may have been rushed or maybe missed altogether, or is it a problem with their outlook and their attitude about the work? Meaning, do they think they're being asked 
to do too much, but haven't voiced those concerns? Do they simply have too many aspects of their role that they don't like to do or even want to do, so they keep skipping it or deferring it to someone else? That's a watch out. You know, hosting those check-in conversations often during those 30 days can confirm the next steps that you'll take in order to support your newest team member and answer the question, are they a long-term fit or not? So are we seeing potential for growth or are we seeing signs that this person will continue to have difficulty in this role? If you are answering no to any of these questions, it's time to bless and release them. Let's not waste their time or your time any longer. Be professional and respectful and let them go and find a better role that's more suited to their skill set. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today.